Hi friends, welcome to Ofa Studies YouTube channel. This is part 51 in Azure Synapse Analytics playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about how we can create a Spark job definition in Azure Synapse Analytics and also how we can submit it. So firstly, we have to discuss about like what is a Spark job definition and then we have to see how to create this Spark job definition and, and then how to submit the job, right? So don't uh, confuse yourself by seeing this word spark job definition and everything so think like that usually any code which you write and which you write and execute on spark cluster that is called a uh, spark application so you can think like that so spark application is nothing but like a, a program or a code which you execute on the spark cluster okay now what is spark job so think like a spark job is a process that will take this spark application and execute it so this is spark job you can think like a processor or, or, uh, or a thread uh, that will actually take this uh, spark program or a spark application what you written and execute it on top of the spark so you can think like that now what is spark job definition so whenever i said this spark job will actually it's like a scheduled processor or something that will take this application to run right so we will be defining some compute inside that spark job in the inside this process like maybe take the four cores and then execute my spark application on top of the spark cluster or something like that right so defining that process or defining this spark job is nothing but like a spark job definition so in real time what we can do is in the azure synapse analytics if i go to browser so this is my synapse analytics uh, and here if i go to develop under develop i will be having something called if i click this plus icon I can see something called Apache Spark job definition. So like how I create a SQL script, how I create a notebook and data flow. Similarly, I can create a Spark job definition also. So what that means is using this Spark job definition, I can actually define a Spark job that can take a Spark application and execute it on the Spark cluster. So that is what I can do it. So that means first we need to have a Spark application ready. RS program in which is written in the PySpark, it should be ready. Not only PySpark, you can write your code in Java, or C Sharp, or SQL. So because Spark supports multiple languages, right? So basically, it's a program or it's an application that will do some process by executing it on cluster, Spark cluster. Okay. So now this application is running by the Spark job, and that job has some definition to it. That means uh, how the processor should be, what values to be supplied for this program, and everything. So that is the reason it is called as Spark job definition. So if you go to the browser, as I shown here. So this is where you can see this uh, same thing spark job, right? So you, you need to hit this plus icon and then select that spark uh, job definition option there. Okay. So now let me practically explain you this. Okay. So I have written one sample uh, Python file in my local. So this is the part under this path. I have a Python file called sample code dot Python file. So let me quickly open this Python file and then let me explain you what I written inside this Python file. So let's wait for the, uh, let me double click this Python file to open it. Okay, let me do one thing. Let me right click and open this with Visual Studio Code maybe. So let's wait for the Visual Studio Code to open this Python file here. Great, my Python file opened, which is sample code.py. So what I will be saying is this code or this program, whatever you are seeing here right now, I will call it like a Spark application actually. So why I will call it like a Spark application? The reason is this code I am going to execute on top of the Spark cluster actually. Okay, and if you closely observe what this code is doing is uh, here I am importing a uh, library or importing a module called system in the Python and then from this Spark session I am taking this PySpark.sql and then inside this if if block what I am doing this code right whatever you are seeing this code this code is actually create it will actually create a Spark session actually. So whenever you have to execute a Spark code on the Spark cluster, you have to have the Spark session established first, right? So that the Spark session, this code will create. And whatever the Spark session it creates, it will get stored into this variable. And, and, and this variable has a Spark session, right? So from now on, I can use all the well-known functions or commands called like reading a CSV, writing data to the CSV, reading parquet file and everything. Whatever you regularly write in the Synapse notebooks, right? So you can do the same thing. So since the Spark session establishes from this code, after that what I am doing it here is, I am trying to read a CSV file. Which CSV file I am trying to read? Uh, I am relying on some system command line. So what this is, is importing here, right? 
so there is something called argv argument so this will actually take the command lines that means whenever you try to execute this code along with this code if you pass some values that all values will come into array and from that array each item you can access using this indexes here so the first path whatever you supply there it will be taken into the first item and the second variable or second value whatever you pass along with the command line along when you are executing this code that will be taken from this index 2 so basically whenever i try to run this code i can pass two values along with that and that two values will be available inside this argv and from this collection using this indexes i am trying to access it so whatever the path i supply as a first value when i am running this spark application or this python code that value will be taken here as a path to read the csv and then whatever the second value i will pass when i am executing this code second value will be taken as a path where to save this to save this data so i am reading a csv and storing that csv into a data frame variable and on top of the data frame variable i am writing i am using a write attribute and i am trying to write the data back into some different location as a csv file only so a very simple basic python code i did i created as as a local file here now you imagine like this code is nothing but like my spark application so what you need to do you need to upload this into your synapse studio and from synapse studio using this spark job definition you can execute it so firstly what you need to do is we need to take this program uh, you, you can call it as a python file or you can call it like a spark application so we have to upload this file into a data lake storage maybe on a cloud so that from that storage location i can take that and uh, give the path here so this is the spark job uh, definition file this is the file you have to execute so like that i can give that so let me do one thing so let me close this let me discuss these changes firstly let me go to this data menu let me go to adls gen2 here this is the this is the data lake storage which connected with my synapse so you can either upload into a different data lake storage or you can upload into a data lake storage which is connected here it is up to you if you are uploading into a some different data lake storage make sure you have a storage blob contributor role okay so now here under sample container may uh, what i will be doing maybe i will be creating a folder here so let me create a new folder here and then maybe let me name this folder name like maybe spark job so spark job is the name i am giving let me hit the create button to create this folder and uh, once the folder created let me go inside this folder and inside this folder i want to upload that python file which i written in a spark so let me hit this upload button and then let me go to the local browser here so as i said it is available under downloads sample files so let me go to sample files for python okay and then under the sample files for python i have this sample code.py so let me upload this file here and then let me hit this upload button so now i am uploading that uh, python file into my data lake storage gen2 as a first step so this python file has a code that will actually read a csv file and write the csv file back which file to read and which file to write i can define it when i am running this python code why because as i said in the code the path is not hard coded it is dynamic whatever the values you pass along with the execution that values will be taken to read the file and the write the file back so now python file is available here now let me go to the development menu and here let me hit this plus sign and let me create a new apache spark job definition and uh, if you want to name it something you can name it uh, in my case let it be i am minimizing this general properties and here my spark job is or my spark application is a python file right so i need to make sure to select a python option here so let me select the language option as python and then here i need to upload the file or i need to provide the path of the storage location where the file is there so let me go to the sample container let me right click this file here and then let me go to properties and from the properties i need to take the path abfss protocol type path you need to copy that and then go back to spark job definition and then let's paste the uh, data lake storage path url here then command line argument so here this means uh, whenever you try to execute this python file along with the execution you can supply two command line values means uh, you think like uh, i am passing two values also along with my execution so that my program can take those values and execute and in my pr my program is already written in such a way that it can take two values right so here i need to supply two values one value will be path of the file and the second value will be 
path of the file where I want to move the file. So let's do one thing. Let me go to sample container and then let me go back to sample container here in my storage. So I have a folder called data folder. So let's assume inside this data folder I have this employees.csv file, right? Maybe I want to copy this file and then move this file into some output folder, let's assume. So that is my requirement. Since my program is already written in a dynamic fashion, so I want to supply the path of employee.csv file from the data folder here. And then here I want to pass the path to the output folder. So that that employee file will be moved to the or that employee file data will be moved to the or copied to the not moved actually copied to the output folder. So that is what my requirement. That is what I want to achieve using this Spark application. So let's assume that. So for that I copied this ABFSS path first and then let me go to Notepad here and here let me do one thing. So first value I will be passing this one and then the second value I want to pass right. Whenever you want to pass the second value, you need to make sure to give a space. So you can pass 10 values also. You need to make sure every value is separated by space here. So I have given a space. Now the second value is the value where I want to copy the data, right? Because the right function or right attribute is applying on top of that path. So what I will be doing, so my let's assume my requirement is, uh, let me go back to sample container. Uh, maybe I want to uh, copy the data into some result folder here. So under sample container, under result folder, I want to copy it. So let me go to properties of the output folder for now. And let me copy this path here and then let me go back to notepad after space I am pasting this here so it's not the output maybe I want to copy the data to a result folder let's assume so I created a two paths let me copy that okay and so let me remove this so let me copy this both the argument values let me go back to this uh, synapse studio let me hit cancel let me go to spark job definition so here I am supplying both the values here see first value is pointing to the employees.csv file because I want to take the, that file then space and then second value is pointing to a result folder okay so that's it now here I need to select the spark pool with which you want to execute this so for this you need to make sure you should have a spark pool created already so how to create a spark pool if you have seen my previous videos you know that you can go to management hub you can go to Apache spark pools and here you can create a new spark pool so let me create a new spark pool and let me name it like spark pool 1 so let me name it spark one second spark pool one maybe this is the name i want to give and then maybe okay let me use only three that is enough okay i don't want more so let me hit this review place create button and then let me simply hit this create button to create the apache spark pool here great spark pool is created here right if i go to this bell icon see it is under deployment actually it will get created so meanwhile let's so yeah spark pool deployed successfully let me go back to development menu once again and here let me select my spark pool what I just now created here. So using this spark pool I want to execute this python file and when I am executing these two values I want to pass into my python file so that those two values will get replaced this placeholders here and the corresponding file will be copied into data frame and that file data or that data frame data will be saved into this path. So now let's go back here and uh, yeah I am good here right. So far we are good here. So let me scroll down and that's it. Simply hit this publish button to publish these changes as a spark pool definition. So this means like you created a spark pool definition successfully now. So once you publish that means you are saving the changes also into the Synapse Studio successfully now. For example if you want to execute this spark pool you can manually execute it by hitting this uh, submit button. So this way what you will be doing you will be taking this spark application that means this python file and submitting into onto my spark cluster and when i am submitting i am passing two values into that cluster and those two values will be taken by in by my code why because i am using this system module and argv to access thus that command line values order i am supplying along with the executor so it will take that and it will perform the actions accordingly so here we need to make sure uh, to monitor this spark job definition either you need to wait here to get that link of monitoring that spark job execution or you can go to monitor tab under monitor tab you need to go to spark apache spark applications why because it is apache spark application execution and here you can see your apache spark execution is happening so this is your spark job definition one is it is the name of your spark job and right now you can see it is submitted so now you have to wait for the process to complete here right now status is submitted then it will become an in progress status and then finally the execution will complete either successful or either by error if everything is fine it will complete successfully 
or else there might be some error okay so let's wait for the execution to complete here it is still submitting actually behind the scenes what will happen your cluster will spin up so it will take some time in real time when you are practicing it you just need to wait for some time to to execution to trigger after submitting status now you can see the status is running right your spark job definition is running and you can see a logs also here so once your entire execution completes you can see a success status here actually and if i go back to development tab i i should have see i i can see this link also the monitor link also for this spark job execution so when i click this link it will automatically again take me to here only either you can manually come to this monitor tab and then watch your spark job definition execution or wait for the submission to get trigger under the uh, development tag itself and once you see this link click it and go to the monitor tab so either way is fine so either way you will be landing at a same place only so let's wait for the execution to complete here actually great it looks our spark job execution is successful now that means the file might have copied already into the result folder so let me make sure that let me go to data tab here data menu here and under data menu i should go to the sample container and under the sample container if i go to this uh, result folder should be there so previously there is no result folder right see now we have a result folder and if i go inside this result folder you can see a file is copied here so let me double click and download this file and see whether we have the data in it or not so let me open this file so i think there are two employees inside that file if i remember correctly so let me see whether that data is also available inside this csv file or not so let's wait for the excel to open here great yeah okay so there are totally four employees we had see that means we are able to successfully copy the data right so what we did we haven't written our notebook inside the synapse what we did we written a spark code locally and that spark code we are saying it like it's a thing like it's like a spark application and this code we saved it as a file and that file we uploaded into a storage so that in the job definition we can refer that file to execute by the processor so synapse job will actually execute that uh, uh, sp uh, sorry spark job will actually execute the execute the spark applications right so that is the reason inside the job definition we have given certain settings also if you closely observe we have selected like which pool to execute it and also we have selected certain other parameters like what is the sp apache spark version if you want to change this executor size you can change to small and medium depending upon that the cost will vary and everything so this is how you can create a spark job definition so in short spark job definition is nothing but like uh, once you have a spark application or a spark code ready then you can upload that code into spark that, that means into synapse studio and then from there you can define a spark job definition like this much of the executor size i want and everything and then you can execute that particular code whatever you have inside that uh, file so if it is a python then dot py file will be there if it is a java then jar file will be there so if it is scala also then jar file will be there right so that's how it will works so if you feel little confusion to understand this spark job definition i will encourage you to watch this video multiple times so that you will get a more clear idea thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever i add videos thank you so much